This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is even another Yu-Gi-Oh! comment tutorial video, but not in the conventional method. It is going to be showing you something that is basically utilizable with a less than stellar hand because I see a lot of people that complain about the fact that I always use the Venus engine in my World Chalice decks and they're like, well, you could draw triple shine balls and that could mess you up and you could not be able to play the game. And that's definitely the furthest thing from the truth. Not taking into account the fact that there's only a 0.10% chance of you drawing all three mystical shine balls in one opening five card hand. There's only a 3.64% chance of you drawing two of them in the same five card hand, but for all three of them, that is literally one tenth of one percent. Not even a full percent, a tenth of a percent. But anyway, I have not done any videos in the past couple of days because of a few varying factors. The first one would be that I have been no lifing Duel Links like something fierce. The PC release happened, and I've been playing Duel Links nonstop for the past like four days. I hadn't played it like before in a long time or in any way seriously, and I'm in love with Duel Links. I might actually start doing some Duel Links like uh, like PvP grinding on my channel for a couple of days of uh, content and stuff if you guys are interested in it because if it turns out if you're actually a Yu-Gi-Oh veteran and you understand the ins and outs of the game in its entirety you have such a lopsided advantage in that game when you start going through PvP but anyway the other reason would be that I got some pretty nasty bronchitis middle of last week up to the point where it was so deep in my throat that I completely lost my voice and I was doing things like coughing up blood because of how uh, how awful my situation was. So it was not a good time to be alive if you were me, so I physically couldn't record any videos. But anyway, with those little things aside, those should be resolved and things should be resuming in terms of videos and stuff like that because there's a lot of things I want to talk about. But anyway, back to the point in hand. What I have for you is I'm going to be showing you a combo that involves you having three Mystical Shine Balls in your hand and one combo card. And that combo card is going to be the worst one, in theory, on paper uh, that you would have to start your hand with. And that is World Legacy World Chalice. Now, you could also have Brilliant Fusion. You could have things like that. Those are actually a little bit better than this and than what I'm going to show you. But on paper, to the casual observer, this looks like an awful hand. You have three Shine Balls. You have World Legacy World Chalice. But what do I see in this hand? I see you draw two off Ningirsu, and you make two live Firewall Dragons that are co-linked with each other and can each bounce for one each, at minimum. If you had another card in your hand to be a combo piece, you could obviously extend it. This also allows you to have a hand with, uh, if Kyoto Waterfront was in your hand, or if you draw it off Ningirsu, you could also drop a Gamma Seal with negations during this combo sequence. And that is with three Mystical Shine Balls and no other engine piece other than just one combo starter essentially that has to be part of the world legacy world chalice engine um one of those th types of things it could be the brilliant fusion to get lee like i've said or it could just be this and this is honestly what looks worse on paper because at least with brilliant fusion you can be like oh yeah brilliant fusion is broken it gets me to a stratos but now this is a tribute monster how are you going to mess around with being able to put this on the board and then actually get it off and do plays with that so essentially that is what i am going to be showing you here, because I've reached 20,000 subs, so I figured I'd do something a little bit different for you guys. Uh, this is not a 20k sub celebration video in any way, shape, or form, uh, but there's one of those in the works that I need to start filming now that my voice is back. But anyway, uh, but thank you so much for the support, anyway, you guys. But anyway, so, combo. Time to show you what you guys show you guys what you do with these shine balls because at the end of the day they are vanillas and you always want some capacity to vanilla monsters in your hand. That's why we play Venus because Venus being an effect monster summons multiple normal monsters out of your deck um, and like if you don't have Venus you really need access to vanilla monsters. That's why the World Chalice vanillas are pretty important. Uh, that's why this card is important. Uh, like, if your hand is full of effect monsters, it sucks. Like, those are the true brick hands. Uh, but with triple shine ball, it's actually not that bad at all. But so you'll normal summon one shine ball to start this combo off, and you'll link away with it into a link spider. Now from here, you'll use link spider to special summon another one of those mystical shine balls out of your hands. And from here, you'll link away with this shine ball into your Imduk the World Chalice Dragon. So this is going to give you an additional normal summon. And we're going to use that additional normal summon on our World Legacy World Chalice by tributing the Link Spider out of our extra monster zone. So we've gotten two Shine Balls out of our hand. We've rotated cards around. We've only taken a minus one to card advantage thus far uh, just to turn the Shine Balls into cards that we could utilize uh, to get to a point where we can make an Aurum play. So now from here, you're going to link away with the Imduk and the World Chalice uh, itself. And you're going to link into Aurum, the World Chalice Blademaster. 
So from here, your World Legacy World Chalice will trigger its grave effect because it was properly tribute summoned, and you are going to special summon Lee the World Chalice Fairy, and you are going to special summon World Chalice Guard Dragon out of your deck. And then the Lee the World Chalice Fairy is going to search for another vanilla, or just a World Chalice name. It doesn't necessarily have to be a vanilla in any capacity, uh, but I mean like vanillas is the aspect of what we're trying to hit uh, with this uh, with this video, so might as well clear vanillas out of the deck if you're capable of doing so, right? So, carrying on. What you're going to do from here is because Lee and World Chalice Guard Dragon are different types and different attributes, you're going to link them both away into your Ebe, the World Chalice Priestess, over here in your center monster zone. And then from here you are going to use Guard Dragon's Grave Effect, banishing it from your graveyard to bring back one of the Mystical Shine Balls. And so that is going to again turn into an Emduk. So you're going to link away the Shine Ball into Emduk the World Chalice Dragon. Now from here, we're going to do something with this last Shine Ball. We're going to discard it for Lee's Graveyard Effect to put Lee back into our hand to be used with our Ningirsu play. This is how we're going to get to draw two, and how we're going to get to uh, the certain uh, parts of the combo that we want to be in. But so from here, then you're going to link away with the Eeb and the Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon. You're going to link into the Ningirsu in the center zone that Orm is pointing down to. And you are going to make Ningirsu chain link one, and Eeb and Imduk chain link two and three. Uh, this masks it from Ash Blossom, if your opponent for some reason didn't Ash Blossom the World Legacy World Chalice. Masks this from Ghost Ogre. Uh, but then also, like, this thing does mandatorily activate. It's not like it will only activate if it points to a World Chalice monster. No, its effect is mandatory the first time it is link summoned in a turn to activate this effect. Even if there's no World Chalices next to it, it will activate, and if there's nothing there, you will just draw zero cards. But regardless, so you're going to use the uh, Eeb and the Imduk to special summon your Chosen and your Lee in the zones next to Ningirsu, and then you will draw two cards. So, pretty good, right? We've gotten all the Shine Balls out of our hand, we've done an Ningirsu draw, pl uh, draw play for at least two cards. Uh, that's fantastic in terms of what people consider the worst hand in World Chalice to be, which is three Shine Balls, which is not the case. It's not the worst hand because it's Vanillas. In any other deck, I could see you being conditioned to think that it's the worst hand possible. But with World Chalice, like, this deck actually just makes amazing utilization of the resources that you're putting into it in the form of those Shine Balls that it just, it, it counterbalances itself out in nice ways. But so, what we're going to do from here is that we're going to link away with the Lee and the Ningirsu into a Link 4, and you're going to link into the first Firewall Dragon, again, down in this zone that Orem opens for you. Then from here, you're going to link away with the Chosen by the World Chalice, being the vanilla that it is, into our third Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon. You're going to link into it over here next to the Orem zone. Now from here, you have a couple of different options, uh, depending on if the other card in your hand was another monster, if you drew any monsters off of your two, uh, fire, uh, off your two Ningirsu draws, there's a few different things that you have access to, but assuming that nothing else is really uh, a viable resource for you, you can use Orem to tribute Imduk and bring back either Ningirsu or the uh, Eve. It doesn't matter which. You just want enough materials in terms of link materials to make another Firewall Dragon. And so in this case, if you bring back Ningirsu, you'll treat Ningirsu as a three, and you'll treat Orem as one material. If you brought back Eeb, you would just treat them both as twos, and you make another Firewall Dragon down here in the zone next to this Firewall Dragon. And so, why you're able to uh, why you're able to draw Kyoto Waterfront and make a live Gamma Seal is because when you do the uh, Chosen play uh, into the Imduk, you're capable of doing uh, you're capable of summoning stuff out of your hand off this Firewall Dragon, and things things can sort of you know benefit you from there. But so, what you've done in this combo sequence alone is that you took four cards, you took the three Mystical Shine Balls and the one World Legacy World Chalice, and you turned it into a different set of four cards. You did not gain any advantage in terms of raw card economy in this combo sequence, but you gained advantage in terms of theoretical card advantage. Theoretical card advantage being that the three Mystical Shine Balls were essentially blanks, and the only real card in your hand was World Legacy World Chalice, but you've now upgraded that to at least two actual real cards in the form of these two live firewall dragons and then you could potentially have any other cards in your hand that are also live cards that are infinitely better than what the shine balls were as literally effectless vanilla monsters in your hand but regardless this is still something that's uh that's very good for you like it's not even a bad play because it still cycles you around into 
the boss monster of your deck, essentially, the boss monsters of your deck. Because you could just stop on Ningirsu if you wanted to. There's so many different things uh, that are factors to what makes it all right. Like, it's it's not the end of the world if you draw any number of Shine Balls. And that's the reason that I see people justifying their, their dislike of the Venus engine, is that, oh, you draw Shine Balls and it sucks. But meanwhile, if my hand doesn't have Venus in it and I have at least one Shine Ball to summon, I'm usually actually pleased with that because it does kickstart your plays in the way that you need them to in the form of having a vanilla monster to allow you to go into your Imduk and stuff. Like sometimes you'll draw hands where the only vanilla in your hand is something like a Shine Ball. And so you do normal summon it and you go into Imduk and then you tribute the Imduk for a World Legacy World Chalice. And then you summon a monster out of your hand off that Imduk, and then that allows you to go into your Orum play with World Legacy, World Chalice, and whatever you summoned. There's so many different little nuances with this deck that there's too much problem with just putting a blanket statement over the entirety of your uh, of your play string and your mindset of I don't want to draw Shine Balls. That's not what we want to do. Uh, because it's definitely not. It's it's not something that's too big of an issue. It's not something that's big of a deal. You can open three Shine Balls and one combo piece, and you can still do something like draw two Omning Gear Suit and make two Firewall Dragons. It's it's pretty ridiculous when the mindset of certain players limit the play that they're capable of doing, when really they... And then they try to like justify that limitation of play to the cards that they're being run and use that as justifications for cutting cards that are clearly good, like Venus... When in reality, it's just the player's mindset and lack of information and lack of ability to identify trends or capabilities that is the real uh, that's the real driving force as to why things aren't working out the way that they expected to with whatever deck they were playing. It's very interesting. Like, never give up on some sort of option until you've completely explored every single uh, like avenue that it could poss possibly give you essentially is what is what I'm trying to say here But anyway, that's all for this video That's all I wanted to show you is you can open with triple shine ball that tenth of a percent chance And as long as you have at least one combo card You can still do something really worthwhile with your combo sequencing because this is still two firewall dragons That are both live for one bounce Which is still pretty good and you didn't lose any cards in terms of raw card economy on it because you are still at four cards, and we started with four cards, and you obviously have other different things that could go on in between that could yield pluses along the way. So, anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, links, as always, are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page, as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly, Patreon is the best way to do so, and you'd have my eternal gratitude if that is something you'd like to do. But otherwise, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. And as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video. All right, so now that the video's over, I'd like to give a special thanks to Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a ton, a lot more than you may ever know, and you have my eternal gratitude. You guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.